So I have this uh, tiny little device that I built in my hands right now and um, I want to share how I built this. You know, sometimes we make projects just for fun and it could be because we want to learn about something and in this case, I wanted to learn how these ordinary remote controls that we have in our home work, especially in terms of the infrared communication protocol. I also wanted to explore whether we can push the boundaries of what it means to make a smart device without connecting it to the internet or the cloud. And a bonus point, um, if I could actually use it in my home right here, that would be awesome. Hence the concept of building an infrared blaster or an IR blaster came to my mind so that I could actually control my aircon or other home appliances that uses infrared remote control. So in today's video, I want to show you how I integrated the custom PCB hardware, the firmware embedded in the microcontroller and the browser-based software to configure this tiny device. I also want to share some steps that I took to think about how to build a very, very simple prototype or also known as a minimum viable product. The very first step of creating the simplest version of a project is to do a little bit of research on existing devices and projects. We should roughly know the technologies, the price, and also whether it is a developer, enterprise, industrial, or even a consumer product. So I found an $8 consumer device called the Chung Hop Universal Air Conditioner Remote Control. It is an infrared remote control that can work with multiple brands of aircon. So how does it actually work? Well, the user manual shows a list of brands and codes. For example, I have a Mitsubishi Aircon, so I have to try out the codes from 551 to 599. And interestingly, I also found a couple more IR blasters that can be connected more than aircons to pretty much any home appliance and they are Wi-Fi connected. The first one is about $20 by Xiaomi, which is also connected to the Wi-Fi. It has a library of signals to support thousands of home appliances. It also has an interactive addition to record a new infrared signal by pointing the remote control to the device and storing the signal. The second device is Remo by Nature and it has two models, the $99 or the $69 one. Along with the Wi-Fi connectivity, it also has inbuilt sensors to make intelligent automation based on GPS, light, temperature, humidity, etc. to control various home appliances. Now those were some of the commercially available consumer devices. Now, if we want to build something ourselves, it is worth looking at open source projects built by engineers and hackers. So I found an old project called IR Kit that uses the Atmega32U microcontroller, a Wi-Fi module, and an IR LED emitter and a receiver. Sites like Hackster or Hackaday list plenty of infrared-related projects. One of them is called the IR Blaster with CEC that uses Raspberry Pi with the Home Assistant software on board along with an IR receiver and transmitter. The next step in building our MVP is to decide on the core functions. What is the brain of the project, the firmware, the software, wireless connectivity, if any, and the cost? Now, this is exactly where my engineering brain that is super excited to use all kinds of technologies, software, hardware, firmware, kind of uh, conflicts with my feasibility brain that asks me to calm down and slow down. In terms of the brain, there are basically two broad categories. Uh, one of them can be a microprocessor, which is running a full-fledged Linux operating system. And the other one is basically a microcontroller that is running the embedded firmware. Now, I did not want to constantly power something off the wall. So I went something with a microcontroller that I can possibly power it with a battery or even sleep and then wake up to conserve the power consumption. So I took the microcontroller Sam D21G used in Arduino Zero. The alternative is the common Atmega328P used in Arduino Uno. So using Sam D21G, I want to focus on three features that I required for this project. Number 
Number one, it has a large enough flash memory of 256 KB to store the raw infrared codes. So as you saw from uh, the similar projects, the projects that I kind of listed, there are two possibilities. One is you have a library of many, many models and then you store the infrared signals and then you match them when you replay them with the remote. The second option is to record uh, your remote control and store them. Well, obviously I went with the second option. Number two, it has a periodic wake up enabled by the 32 bit real time counter. I can use this feature to sleep the microcontroller and wake up periodically to do a task based on the algorithm I implement in the firmware. And number three, it has support for the USB 2.0 interface so an extra chip won't be needed for the USB. So after choosing the brain, in this case I chose a microcontroller SAMD21G, the next important core function is obviously the IR receiver and the transmitter. To record an incoming infrared signal from the remote control, I used an IR receiver TSAP 4838 at 38 kHz carrier frequency. I followed the application circuit suggested in the data sheet and I incorporated it into my electronic schematic design. As for the IR transmitter or emitter, an IR LED was used at 950 nanometer wavelength. Incorporating this component was a bit of a challenge for me. So after looking through plenty of other similar circuits, I finally settled on using an NPN transistor and a few resistors. So this particular resistor is connected to the base of the NPN transistor and it can be varied to control the actual IR range. So basically the lower the resistance the longer the range and of course more power consumption. With a value of 47 ohms that I used the IR range in this circuit is about 3 to 4 meters line of sight. Overall, it was a tiny PCB to manufacture. A temperature sensor can help to add some simple logic to control the aircon based on the temperature. As for power management, micro USB can be used to configure the device and the battery can be used during normal operation. So in summary, the bill of materials has 49 parts and 24 unique parts. The total cost is about USD $10, which is pretty comparable to the consumer device prices that we saw earlier. Finally, after the hardware, let's discuss the software. Now I have two components. One is the firmware that is running inside the microcontroller. And this is where we will uh, record the infrared and we will also check with the temperature sensor to emit the infrared signal. The second one is a web-based software uh, built uh, based upon uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that I used to configure the initial setup for this device. The firmware uses IRLib2 Arduino library, especially the examples of raw receive and raw send. Now, because I want to record and uh, replay the signals, these examples came in handy. The IR signals received is an array of an unsigned 16-bit integer which we can store in the flash of the microcontroller and replay it according to the algorithm of the firmware. In the configuration software, Web USB API is used. Now a note of caution, it is an experimental technology. In terms of browser compatibility, only Chrome and Edge support it today. The specification is still uh, in the draft stage and I don't know whether Safari, which is another major browser, will eventually incorporate it. Nevertheless, I decided to use Web USB for the configuration of the setup part and of course today using a mobile phone is a very very common use case. All right, so let's head to the fun part, which is the demo. Here we will finally use the device built to first set it up and then look at some of the debug prints. And finally, we will power it with the battery for the normal operations. So this is the firmware.ino file. And the very first thing I'll do is enable the debug mode. And let's flash in the firmware with the Arduino CLI that I'm using, as well as the make file. And note that the complete firmware is about 
about 36,000 bytes. Now I have uh, connected it via the USB already to flash the firmware and I will also use the USB to configure the device now. And if we go to the system information under MacBook, under the USB, we will see Arduino Zero is connected. So note the product ID and the vendor ID. This is how it will be detecting which device to connect to. So the first thing we will do is connect it via the serial monitor. And once we'll do it, um, we'll see, yep, it says start pine and then it reads the temperature, the humidity, and immediately it starts prompting that, hey, you need to configure something. You need to store the infrared signals. Otherwise, we can't really do much. And uh, this is how I coded in the firmware as well. The first scenario is uh, to do a setup by prompting the user to do that. And at the same time, I am also blinking the LED visually to indicate to the user, hey, you have to configure this device. So let's then head on to this website to configure it. And this is how it looks like. So let's connect to the device. Yep, Arduino Zero paired and connect. And once we do that, uh, notice that it will also detect the vendor ID and the product ID. At the same time, in the serial console, it will also detect that it is connected via the web USB and it will stop the prompting. So this is where we are in the configuration mode. It will continuously now receive the IR. So here's the fun part. This is how we are recording the signals. Now, of course, I have only enabled it for the on and off command and the possibilities are really endless. So I'm simply gonna take this remote control here and point it to the device, especially the IR receiver. So let me click the button and say record the on command and uh, press the remote control. And there you see the on command is received. It is basically an array of 16-bit uh, integers. And if we come to the serial console, we will also the same see the same thing that these uh, numbers are received as uh, the infrared signal. So let's do the same thing for the off command. Let me click the button record off command. And once again, using the remote control, I will point it to the device. And yep, the off command is now received. And I will see the same confirmation in the serial console from the microcontroller. And of course, uh, I have written some very, very simple uh, logic for some edge processing algorithms. So I'm going to trigger it or rather wake it up every 20 minutes for a period of the next four hours. And we can check whether the ideal room temperature is 26. If not, it will turn on and off the aircon accordingly. A super, super simple example. Now, before I submit it, because this is an HTML form, I can do some kind of uh, form validation. For example, I cannot uh, put 200. So let me try to submit it. And you see, it will not allow me to submit it. Uh, that's because in the HTML, I have done a very very, very simple form validation using HTML5. So once I click uh, to submit, it will not only disconnect the port, it will also send the configurations to the microcontroller via the port. Uh, I'm going to reset it back to 26 degrees, which is a reasonable number, and then finally press submit. So there you see user config stored successfully. And when I come to the serial console, you will see that the three numbers has been received, of course, along with the two infrared signals. And immediately it will start doing the demo task. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just turning on and off my aircon every five seconds just for demo. This is, of course, not something that I would do normally. But here's the cool thing. It is now in the normal task mode, turning on and off the aircon. But let's say I need to configure it again. I can connect to the Pine via the web browser and connect it. And after a while, we will see that it will stop the normal mode and then it will be saying that it is connected to the web USB and it will send the user config to the web browser. All right, so what I'm going to do next is to trigger the final, the normal task. And to do that, I will disable the debug and let's reflash it. And notice that the firmware site is lesser now at 23,000. But we can do still the same thing. Let's connect to the Pine, pair it. Let's once again record the on and off and all the configurations because once we flash the firmware, the flash memory is totally cleared. Record the on command and then let's record the off command. And finally 20, say for a duration of three hours and the ideal room temperature is 23. And after I press submit, yep, the user config it stored successfully. So now finally what I can do is I can take out the micro USB 
completely and because this is battery powered, I can now hang it on the wall or keep it on a table uh, line of sight to my home devices and just turn it on. So let's test whether it will turn on and off the aircon every five seconds, just a demo. And there you see it is uh, turning it on and that was off every five seconds. So I am going to go and uh, probably write a proper firmware to have the operations done properly and not every five seconds. So that was an overview of a very, very simple IR blaster that I made with a custom PCB, the firmware and the web USB software. For further details, please visit the project website, hudscape.com slash pine, and you can download the open source schematic, layout, KiKet files, firmware, web USB software, and the bill of materials. Now there are a couple of improvements that I want to make. The first one is having a mechanical housing. Now mechanical or um, creating a CAD design 3D printed a box for this kind of device is something that I have never done before. So that is uh, really a bit of challenge to me. So that would probably be my next improvement. And the second one is I'm really, really thinking of adding Wi-Fi connectivity to this so-called smart device so that I can actually connect to this device and control the home appliances. So I hope you found this video useful, whether you want to build an IR blaster yourself or even buy an off-the-shelf consumer device. Now, I truly, truly believe that only by making something that we can demystify the technology uh, that runs uh, the magic. Well, because it's not magic at all. So I hope